Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We have a big attendance group coming in, so we're just going to let everyone settle in for one moment and then we'll start. Thank you all for joining us today as we kick off Global Success Month. All righty. Just a couple more moments and then we can start. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in today. My name is Evan Smith. I am LIBOR's Global Business Liaison. I'm filling in for Marianne today as we kick off our annual Global Success Month. Global Success Month is a month we dedicate to spreading global awareness, real estate opportunities, and everything global. Be sure to tune in all month long as we bring you valuable content through webinars, social media, and we're even bringing back our in-person global breakfast for the first time since COVID. Today, I am joined by Melissa King, Manager of Member Services and Operations with NAR's Center for Realtor Development. She is here to talk about NAR Certified International Property Designation, the only international designation recognized by the National Association of Realtors. Throughout the presentation, if you have any comments or questions, please type them in the chat box or the, use the Q&A to be addressed later on. Now to introduce Melissa. Melissa King started at NAR in 2017, focusing specifically on the Certified International Property Specialist Designation Program member benefits before moving into her current position, where she oversees the member services for 11 designations and certification programs offered through the Center for Realtor Development. She has a passion for serving the realtor members and advancing their professionalism through, uh, through education and credential programs. Please help me give a warm welcome to Melissa King. Good morning, everyone. Thanks uh, so much for having me here. I'm really excited to be here today to talk about the CIPS designation. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen so we can uh, start the PowerPoint here. All right. And are we all good with the screen share here? We are good. All right, perfect. So um, again, I'm here to talk about the CIPS designation, uh, its process and benefits overview. But before we start uh, on CIPS, oops, it's there we go. Let's uh, get to know global real estate uh, in the U.S. and New York. So we'll dive a little bit into some of this research here and, uh, and connect back over to CIPS momentarily. So who are global buyers? Well, they could be foreign buyers living abroad, uh, recent immigrants, U.S. residents purchasing property abroad, or maybe clients with international family connections. And why is this important? Uh, why do we focus on this? Well, According to the 2022 International Transactions in U.S. Residential Real Estate, uh, the report put out by NAR, um, they put one out each year, so you can always access it on NAR.Realtor. Um, but uh, looking at this report, uh, foreign buyers tend to spend more money. Uh, their median purchase price um, from the 2022 report was $366,100. And if you see on the right-hand side of the screen, um, the, the graph there, you'll see it compared to all existing home buyers, uh, where the median purchase price uh, was $355,700. Uh, foreign buyers uh, pay in cash. Uh, according to the report, 44% of foreign buyers paid all cash. And the chart just below the one we were just looking at um, shows the all cash buyers. And you'll see the 44% in 2022 for foreign buyers uh, compared to 24% um, for all existing home buyers. And lastly, uh, they refer more business. 70% of leads and referrals are from personal and business contacts. Digging a little bit deeper into the report, um, according to um, the 2022 report, $59 billion was the total sales volume um, in foreign buyer residential purchases. Um, you'll see the spread of the top uh, countries where those um, foreign buyers are coming from. Um, at the top there is um, China with 6.1 billion, followed by Canada, India, Mexico, Brazil, and uh, Colombia. The total volume for uh, foreign buyer residential purchases actually increased over the 2021 number that was 54.4 billion and uh, 2022 that increased to 59 billion, which is uh, great. 
And where are these buyers purchasing? What are the top destinations for foreign buyers? Well, you'll see the number one spot there, Florida with 24%, um, and followed by California, Texas, Arizona, and New York makes this list here, tying with North Carolina. Uh, New York accounted for 4% of foreign buyers with 31% coming from the Asia, Oceania, um, region and 22% from Europe. And New York was the second top destination among Chinese buyers. So serving these international buyers. Um, as the research shows, the investment is there, um, but international transactions are significantly different and can be way more complex than domestic deals. Everything from cultural differences to currency fluctuations, mortgage issues, visa laws, um, much, much more. Um, it can be um, a different process. And that's really where the CIPS designation comes into play. Because the CIPS designation provides you with the knowledge, the research, network, and tools to globalize your business. So by earning your CIPS designation, you'll gain access to the CIPS designee network, which is over 4,200 real estate professionals in over uh, 54 countries. Um, you'll learn how to mitigate various risks associated with global transactions. And realtors who have earned this designation are consumers' best and most trusted resources for navigating the global market. So now let's dive into how to become a CIPS designee and what are the requirements to, to earning the designation. So we'll start first, um, the education component would be first, followed by the uh, international business experience, and then we'll go into what it takes to maintain the designation um, once you've earned it. So starting with the education component, the uh, Certified International Pro Property Specialist or CIPS designation courses, they provide a, an array of information covering the critical aspects of transnational transactions, understanding cross-cultural relationships and regional market conditions. Uh, they help identify, uh, give information on identifying tax issues and the contacts needed um, to build your global team. And then you'll uh, learn more about updated research networks and tools to globalize your business. Diving a little bit deeper into this education requirement, there are five courses required to earn the designation. Um, starting with the two core courses, uh, Global Real Estate Local Markets and uh, Global Real Estate Transaction Tools, um, these are required and you can't substitute um, any other courses for these two. Um, once... Uh, you complete those two courses. Um, the regional courses um, are what comes comes next. And there's a little bit more flexibility here. We have four regional courses spanning Europe, uh, Asia Pacific, the Americas, and Africa and international real estate, which is our, our newest real um, regional course. Um, you must complete three uh, courses. However, one of these could be substituted with either at home with diversity, uh, resort and second home property specialist, or the pricing strategy advisor mastering the CMA course. Um, I will note um, that you can take these courses in any order as long as you complete all five courses within three years. So you have to complete the full designation process, completing the courses and submitting your application within three years of you, of you starting the process. So once you complete the education component, next comes the international business experience through uh, the application form. Um, and assessed on this form, there are 11 different categories available for you to achieve a 100-point minimum. And I know it can sound a little daunting to get to those 100 points, um, but there is a wide variety of uh, categories that you are able to um, fulfill this 100-point minimum, Every, anything from uh, holding an NAR credential, or if you speak a foreign language, um, if you've ever worked, studied, or even traveled abroad, those all count as points. Um, but don't hesitate to reach out to our team here. We're here to help kind of walk you through the process. If you feel stuck or you feel like you 
are nervous that you're not going to get to the points, or if you're wondering if if something in your experience um, may or may not count towards the points, we'll walk you through it. We'll talk you. Uh, we'll talk with you and. Um, get that application filled out. Um, no problem. Well, we can definitely help walk you through that, that, um, process. So always give us a call if you're ever stuck. And so now that you filled out the application, what's next? Well, you'll, the, you'll have to email the application to us to CIPS at NAR.realtor. Um, you'll email the, the PDF copy of the application form. Um, the review process may take around 10 to 15 business days, depending on, you know, the current influx of applications that come through. And um, once reviewed by staff, you'll then receive a link to submit the fees. And so you'll see um, below kind of a breakdown of the fees that um, come with the application. Um, the first is the application fee, which is $75. And then you also pay the current year's annual dues. Now those do get prorated quarterly, depending on when you apply. And so once your uh, fees have been submitted, your applications have been approved, the designation uh, will be fully awarded and you'll have access to the benefits, usually within 22, I'm sorry, one to two business days after the payment is received. So you'll receive a congratulatory email from us notifying you that your designation is active and you're good to go to access the benefits, which we'll get into here momentarily. On the right-hand side, you'll kind of see a snapshot of um, the application form, kind of what it looks like. If you're ever curious, you can most definitely go to nar.realtor forward slash CIPS and um, take a peek at the app uh, there. You can download a copy um, and take a peek at it. And we also have a checklist there for you. So as you're going through the designation process, that's another um, piece, a helpful piece of information that you can download and follow along because there are a lot of steps, um, you can most definitely download that checklist and that'll kind of help guide you through the process as you go through it as well. And again, that's on nar.realtor forward slash CIPS. I'll put the link in the chat here once we're all uh, done here. And maintaining the designation. So now that you've earned the designation, there are um, steps needed to, to maintain it going forward. And that's to uh, maintain your yearly dues. Um, the annual dues are $220. And we uh, usually start that process for billing every November timeframe. So in the fall, um, and we always like to point out that payments made before the end of the year receive a 10% discount. So um, we always try and uh, do that discount period um, from the start of our renewal process through the end of the year. So it's a great incentive to, uh, to renew early there. All right, so now let's get into the CIPS benefits. There are so many, so we'll dive right into these. Um, there is, a, a again, a wide range of CIPS designee benefits now that you're a designee, um, starting with the Global Marketing Center, and we'll dive into this one a little bit deeper in the next slide, but this is essentially the centralized hub of where all your CIPS benefits live. So, um, that's kind of your, your go-to place as a designee um, when looking for your member benefits. Um, networking opportunities, there are several. Starting with your CIPS directory profile, you're able to customize your profile, add your photo, bio, um, and this is a, a place for designees to either maybe look for a referral partner and another designee or members of the public also can search there on any era's website for a CIPS designee in a particular area. Um, one of our most popular benefits is the private Facebook group. It's really a networking group for our designees, and our designees are really so active in that group. They share referral opportunities, um, articles, they pose questions, and this is a really great place where our designees connect with one another. Um, there's always referral opportunities being posted in there from, from all different areas and regions and countries. So it's, it's a wonderful place where our designees come together and network with one another um, on the regular. Uh, we also have exclusive events at NAR meetings. So at the legislative meetings in May, we have um, a CIPS designee networking reception. And uh, in the annual meetings in November, we do a CIPS celebration for all of our new designees and current designees um, to kind of celebrate the year uh, of CIPS. 
And lastly, under networking opportunities, we do have a sample referral form for our designees. Um, should you ever need one, it's there for you to download as well. Um, moving on to marketing tools and materials. Um, these all live within the Global Marketing Center, but you'll of course have access to the CIPS logo for you to use within your own marketing materials. Um, and um, that's available in you know different file types, colors, and uh, so forth. Um, we have a sample press release for you to an announce your designation. Um, and we also have um, CIPS specific PhotoFi templates. PhotoFi is an NAR member benefit uh, with customizable social media um, templates. And as a CIPS designee, there's actually some further templates in there promoting your designation. So. Um, if you see on the right hand side, it's the I am your CIPS, your real estate connection to the world. That's one of the photo file templates there that you can enter in your photo and, and information and, and use for your social media posts, which is a uh, pretty cool. That's relatively new. And lastly, business development benefits. Um, the CIPS mentor program is um, also a relatively new member benefit and it's a really great program for our designees to connect. Um, there's usually um, a guest speaker from either um, a CIPS designee or uh, maybe a CIPS instructor on a, on a topic that's been requested. And um, after the presentation is over, it's a great way for designees to connect, pose questions, and um, and learn from experienced CIPS designees who, who join those sessions. Um, those are monthly, and we also post the recordings in the Global Marketing Center. So if you miss a, a session, no fear, because uh, you'll be able to refer back to previous sessions and, and learn a lot from the from the presentations and the and the conversations with other designees, um, we also have two um, publications. One is a, a print that we have, a Global Perspectives, and that comes out quarterly, and, and so we mail that to our designees on various um, global. Um, real estate topics. We usually dive into uh, different um, areas, whether it's marketing or um, uh, different um, country perspectives or um, that's our our publication that we mail out quarterly. Um, and then we also have quarterly e-newsletters just with articles, updates, anything to keep in mind, reminders um, to, uh, for your CIPS designation. So we do touch uh, quarterly with um, e-newsletters as well. So the Global Marketing Center, as I mentioned, is kind of that centralized hub of where you can access all your member benefits as a CIPS designee, um, touching on a couple more um, items that are within the Marketing Center, you can download a copy of your designation certificate. Now we do mail one out as well, but if you ever needed a digital copy, it's there for you to download. We have customizable postcards, flyers, and uh, business card templates, um, digital marketing tools. So we've got banner ads, uh, the website badge, and social media cover photos, some sample PowerPoint presentations, and as I mentioned, the logo as well as the sample press release and referral form. The link down there is to the Global Marketing Center. Now it's only accessible to um, active designees. So if you don't have your designation yet, you won't be able to access it. But as it as you um, become active, um, it will activate with your um, NAR member ID number as your uh, login credentials. Global research um, is, is also available to designees. We actually do post quite a few links within the Global Marketing Center to some of the research reports. So um, the report I referred to earlier today, the International um, Residential Real Estate Report is there, um, commercial real estate, international business trends, and also some local market assessments. So we try and keep our designees connected with the latest research um, that NER puts out. They put out a ton of really, really resourceful um, research reports. And so we always try and keep that up and available for our designees. And uh, I will make an important note here because it is a, a question we get often in our office. Um, the CIPS designation is not an international real estate license. Um, we get asked that often um, if 
if you earn the designation, can you go to a different country and sell real estate? And it is most definitely not a uh, real estate license uh, nor an international real estate license. It is the education program, referral network, um, and, and business enhancing tools and marketing materials that come with it. Um, of course, the rules and regulations in the country where you wish to practice um, or represent clients, that must be followed. I did want to end here today with a little interesting fact. I did pull um, some numbers to see how many designees are in the state of New York. And I found that 135 active CIPS designees currently uh, reside in New York. And I found this great tidbit um, that 42% of the CIPS designees in the state of New York are with the Long Island Board of Realtors, which is amazing. And so you have a really great network here with the Long Island Board of Realtors um, and a, a great network of, um, of other designees to connect with. And of course, if you have any questions, here's my contact information. That's my email address. Um, the website, um, you can go to cips.realtor um, and that's the CIPS general email box if you had any questions, but always feel free to reach out to me and I'm more than happy to assist with any questions. And thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I'm open to uh, any questions. Thanks, Melissa. So actually, there was a question in sure. the um, in the chat. Um, someone, uh, Mr. Kenny Williams is asking, what countries participate with CIPS? Do you know? Um, I, I know that it is, a, a, you know, a lot of countries are offering it and it is open to everyone. But is there an area where they're maybe have it the most or or anything? That's a really good question that I would probably have to run some numbers on, but th there are a ton of countries that offer the CIPS designation and its courses, but we also have a ton of CIPS designees globally. I think it was 54 countries that we currently have designees in. Um, so that's always information I, I can definitely take um, a deeper look into maybe the most, but um, we definitely have a lot of designees in Canada. Um, we have some, you know, in, in Mexico, just off the top of my head, um, Brazil, but um, 54 countries, um, the, the designees span. So um, it's it's a really, really wide network of designees. Sure. And actually, I, I know the requirements for being a CIPS for a U.S.-based realtor versus an international realtor are a little bit different. They are. Can you breathe? I know we have a couple of people that are on the web gotcha. right now that are actually international. And that's the only reason why I asked for it. Oh, um, yeah. Could you briefly just talk about the differences if you're an international realtor, how you would want to become a CIPS versus if you're a U.S. realtor? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So um, as an international um, realtor, you would... Um, still complete the education components. Um, now, instead of taking the transaction tools course, um, there is a course called the business of U.S. real estate. So you would take the local markets course and the business of U.S. real estate, followed by the same requirement when it comes to uh, the regional courses. You still have to complete three of those, and you're also able to substitute, um, you know, at home with diversity resort and second home property specialist or the pricing strategy advisor. So five courses are still required. And um, the, um, the application, and actually I can probably, oh, pull it up here. It looks slightly similar to, um, I'm going to share my screen here one more time. And this is a good um, place to refer to as well. putting you on the spot. <laughs> there we go. No worries. Um, but here um, is the, the CIPS landing page. So um, if you want, since I feel bad, I don't have any uh, slides on uh, the international process. I don't want to um, confuse anyone, but there is a checklist also for um, international um process. The Canadian version is a little bit different. It follows suit to the, the U.S. Uh, application more so. Um, so when you're looking through the site, just be careful, make sure you click on, depending on what country you're in, which, which option you choose. Um, but um, as I mentioned, the business of U.S. real estate and the um, 
uh, regional courses. The application form looks very similar to the U.S., so you'll just want to make sure you look uh, in the top right-hand corner, you'll see the international CIPS designation application. And um, it asks this very same information. Um, you still have the point section. So again, always reach out to us if you have any questions as you're filling this out. Um, and the only difference um, here is when it comes to the application fee. It runs a little bit differently than the U.S. There is a one-time application fee of $300. After that, as long as your international Realtor membership dues um, are maintained with NAR, your designation will be maintained as well. So it's the the structure is a little bit different on the application fee side, but the actual structure of the completing the designation process is very similar. Sure. Um, while you're on the page, Yes. Uh, there was a question in the ch in the Q and A that's asking where do we find the courses um, and uh, the schedules for the CIPS courses. I'll preface this by saying LIBOR partners with NYSAR, the New York State Association of Realtors, and we do offer these courses already. But one of the benefits that a lot of people that have a CIPS designation always say is that they enjoy to travel to get their CIPS done. Um, that way they're even doing some networking with some other people that they're actually going to be able to do some business with later down the line. Does NAR have a list of what courses are coming up right now? Yes, we um on th this is this will definitely be your uh, kind of go to page as you go through the designation process because here we also post the course schedule. So um, in this top little toolbar up here, um, you'll see the course schedule listed here, and anything we're notified about, we'll post to this schedule here. Um, so you'll see it kind of broken down by months. So you know it looks like there's some uh, classes happening in South Carolina and Hawaii. Um, looks like another one happening in Hawaii here. And as it's the beginning of the year, we'll probably, this will start to kind of ramp up as the year goes on, but we've got some classes in Maryland and Las Vegas. You'll see um, it being offered as an institute or maybe just a single course. If you see institute, that means that that um, provider is offering all five courses. That's what we consider a CIPS institute. Um, most of the time they'll happen, you know, in, um, within a couple of weeks of one another, all five classes. It just depends on um, the provider and, and when they're offering it. So if you see that note, that's what that means there that they that they intend to offer all five classes and kind of the span of dates that they're offering it. Um, now also you'll find that a lot of our providers are doing maybe a hybrid model or live virtual. So, um, and also in the classroom. So a lot of our students still do, you know, travel to go to classes. They can also connect virtually or, um, of course, we have our online version of the course, which is um, which is uh, also can be linked through on this page here. Um, excellent. There was a couple of other questions. Oh, someone is asking, could you please... Um, uh, mention that link again that you mentioned during your presentation. Sure. To, uh, was it this one to the CI, just the CIPS page, or was it to maybe some of the research reports? Um, I'll do both, just in case. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. All right, so I'll post first the CIPS and then I'll pop over. NER.realtor has, has a wide variety of information and the research reports are a really, really great. Um, oops, I think I only sent it. There we go. And under NER.realtor just on the homepage, if you go under uh, research and statistics and research reports, there's actually a whole section here that is uh, international. So uh, most of the data I was referring to is from this international transactions in US residential real estate, which again, NAR puts that out every year. Usually it's uh, around summertime. So the 2023 report should be coming out in the coming months. Um, but this is a report we really follow and um, see kind of what's going on um, nationally with, with um foreign buyers. So let me send this here. There's of course also I should say a, another or several other topics and research reports, but specifically international is here and it's really a great 
um, resource. Oh, I do see a, another question. Can a student who lives in another country take some of the courses in the US? Yes, they can. Um, we do, um, the, the only difference in the courses would be um, the core courses, the business of US real estate um, typically isn't offered in the US because uh, transaction tools is, but we do have that class available online as well. But uh, most definitely um, you can take the courses through, um, you know, if you wanted to go into a, another country or someone comes here and takes a course for the CIPS, as long as it's through one of our approved course providers, you can most definitely take the, the class. Marlene Patty actually said an interesting comment that I'd like to read um, so that it is on the recording also. Um, so uh, she mentions it's curious about international clients who have an LLC in a state in US. Uh, so maybe they're not part of the mentioned international data. Um, her point is that maybe there are a lot more international clients than we actually know. And actually, Patty, um, uh, Marlene, I do agree with that statement. Um, but I think what the what the idea about the CIPS is that if you have a client who is uh, either looking inbound or looking outbound, you would feel the most comfortable uh, referring someone with the CIPS because they have a similar education to what you would receive during the education for the CIPS. All right. Let's see if there's any other questions. Hey, you're welcome, Marlene. Are there any other questions that anyone has regarding the CIPS designation? Feel free to ask. I think we might be good if there are no more further questions. Um, so I, you know, I want to thank you again, Melissa, for taking out the time to be with us today and kicking off Global Success Month. Um, I personally have the CIPS designation, similar to what you said. I got my, um, I use the at-home with diversity as one of my elective courses. Since then, I've actually taken all of the courses, but it was the reason how I got the CIPS designation originally and how I got C2X, just to plug that in there. Um, <laughs> I hope that everyone enjoyed the presentation as much as I did and are ready to start breaking into the global real estate market. Be sure to join us every Wednesday from 12 to 1 this month for our special Global Success Month webinars. This initiative began with a mission to help our local agents understand global opportunities and break into this niche market. We have a packed lineup of webinars scheduled to provide you with information needed to help you succeed globally. Next week, I have the pleasure to host our webinar with CEO for the Spanish International Realty Alliance, LIBOR's Ambassador Association, Francis Fernandez. You can see our entire schedule that we have coming up at our website, lirealtor.com slash global success month. Melissa, thank you again. Have a thank great you day. Thank you for everyone. having me. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.